Hello, in this video we're going to find the volume obtained when the curve f of x equals x squared is revolved around the x-axis from x equals 0 to 2. So first, let's plot the function. And we see that f of x equals x squared is the parabola, and we're plotting this as x goes from 0 to 2. Now, before we actually calculate the volume, let's draw a picture of what the volume will actually look like. So coming over here, step one is to draw the function. Step two, and this is not uh, in your textbook, but it's something I recommend doing, it's to draw a little curvy arrow around the line which you're revolving. And since we're revolving around the x-axis, I'm going to draw my uh, little arrow here to signify that I'm revolving around the x-axis. Now, what I want to do is reflect the function over that line. So I'm going to try my best here to draw the same sort of uh, parabolic shape, which is a little squiggly there, but you get the idea. It's revolving around the x-axis. And now, to make this a 3D drawing, we're going to connect these outer edges as best as we can. And I'm bowing uh, out the front surface there, and I'm going to bow back the back surface. And so we can see that this kind of looks like a bugle horn. Uh, you could draw in some additional lines here to get a uh, perspective that this is a 3D drawing. Or maybe it looks like a witch's hat if you turn sideways. But that's the shape that we're going to calculate the volume of. Now if we come back here into Maple, we can actually make Maple uh, plot this figure for us. We can go under Tools, Tutors, Single Variable, uh, Volume of Revolution, and Maple should uh, come up here with the appropriate tool for us. There we go. Now, recall that the curve we're plotting is f of x equals x squared. We're going from x equals 0 to 2, and we want the volume, um, and we're revolving around the horizontal line, and the distance of rotation uh, from the coordinate axis is 0 units. We are revolving around the horizontal axis, so let's display that. And there indeed is the bugle or the uh, witch's hat turned sideways. Now, if we click on disks, we can also see uh, what some of these representative disks would look like. But let's, let's just keep the volume in there for now. We can also animate this to get an idea of how it is that we're going to calculate the volume. Um, and I'm going to be using the disk method uh, for this calculation. So let's display this. Here it is in our Maple worksheet. Now, before we get going here uh, with using our, our tools of calculus, let's recall the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is volume equals pi r squared times the height. So I'm going to hop back over here to my drawing. I'm going to select a different color here. I'll select yellow. And let's draw in a representative disk. So the disk is going to have a little height, uh, which is parallel to the axis of rotation. It's going to have a bowed front surface, and uh, there's the back surface. And then uh, here's the other end of my cylinder. So here's a cylinder turned uh, sideways. So there's the cylinder. There's the middle, if you'd like, of the uh, cylinder. So it's a cylinder turned sideways. And so if we come over here for a second and think about the volume of a cylinder, I'm exaggerating the drawing a little bit here. We recall that uh, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared. So here's my radius. I'll draw that in another color. There's the radius right there. Um, and pi is just pi. And then the height is right here. So if we think about what this means in terms of uh, calculus, this height, this incremental, this change in x, because this is my x-axis, this is a increment in x, this is going to be represented by the change in x delta x, or in the language of calculus, dx. 
And then the radius here, the radius, think about what this radius is doing. Here's my axis of rotation, and I'm, I'm going all the way up there until I hit that curve. So that radius, so I'm going to say radius, is equal to the function, uh, which is f of x, or uh, in terms of the problem that we're actually looking at, the radius is x squared. Okay, so the idea, if that's you, two there, the idea is here we're going to do lots of little disks here. It's like sliced bread. It's like uh, I'm going to line up all these little disks, and they're so skinny, they're so, they have such tiny little heights in this dx uh, uh, direction, the, the dx component there, they're so tiny, they're going to pick up the volume uh, very precisely. In fact, uh, it's going to be uh, accurate. It's absolutely, it's going to uh, give us the perfect answer because it's a limiting process. If you think about the limit as the, those little heights get infinitesimally small, that will give us the exact volume of this uh, 3D figure. Okay, so let's go back over here to Maple and I'm going to uh, give us some space so that we can work here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this volume equals pi r squared times the height. Okay, so let's think about what this means. Well, we have pi, that's not going to change. Our radius here is x squared. So that's my radius and I have to square the radius. And let's just make this look a little neater here. There we go. Uh, so there's the radius squared times the height, and the height is dx. And so if you uh, sum up all of these little cylinders, that's actually the integral. Uh, we're going as x equals 0 to 2. And I'm just going to put all of that right in there. Uh, let's simplify this a little bit. So, oops, we don't want all the effects in there. We love maple when it behaves. But um, So x squared squared, that's going to give us x to the fourth. So we tidied that up. And let's get rid of that times uh, symbol there. That's kind of awkward for us to think about, but there we go. Uh, there is our integral, and we can actually work this out. We can pull the pi out in front, and we can do the antiderivative of x uh, to the fourth. So this is actually going to be pi over five, x to the fifth. Uh, and we're gonna evaluate that as x goes from zero to two. So that's what we need to do in terms of the calculation. If we go back to our volume tutor, I'm going to hit enter at the end of that line there, and recall we had x squared, 0 to 2, volume, horizontal, and 0 set, um, and we display that. That is the correct picture there, so that is what we wanted. Um, and here's the integral. We just set that up and we reasoned our way through that. And if you actually do the uh, antiderivative and you plug in the limits of integration, you get uh, 32 fifths pi, or if you approximate that as a decimal, you'll get 20.1. Um, so that's great. And uh, that is what we will get for the volume.